What's up everyone? It's Doug the Dog Guy, owner and founder of Bad of the Bone Pet Care, and I am here in Malmsheim, Germany, taking care of Jack and Abby. And I've been getting a lot of questions on Facebook about how I got this gig and how other pet sitters can get traveling pet sitting gigs. So let's talk about it. Before I talk about how I actually got this gig and how you can get similar types of gigs, I do just wanna take a moment to say how incredibly grateful I am for this opportunity. When I started Bad to the Bone eight years ago, I never ever dreamed that I would end up in Germany taking care of the best dogs imaginable. I mean, this is truly the opportunity of a lifetime and I could not be more thankful. Now, while this is my first ever international pet sitting gig, it is not my first traveling pet sitting gig. A lot of you know that my business is in Florida, but I have several clients on the West Coast in Oregon, Washington, and California that I travel for often. I've also gone to Tennessee for clients, uh, Virginia, and multiple other places. And I have gotten all of these traveling clients the same way. Let's start by stating the obvious. Um, these are obviously not normal clients and this is not normal pet sitting. This is truly a premium service for high-end clients. And that's my first piece of advice for getting gigs like this is to uh, market yourself and market your business as a true premium service and do whatever you have to do and can do to attract high-end clients. People that nickel and dime you and question your policies and all of that kind of stuff will not pay for services like this. Um, think premium and corner your business to be a true leader in your market. I talk a lot in my YouTube videos about how exactly you can do that, but just to name a couple of things, uh, start by raising your prices. Uh, higher prices will naturally attract higher end clientele simply through perceived value. Um, and then you also need to grow a team. And I know uh, some people uh, question whether or not they should hire for their business. And I'm not saying you necessarily have to have 20 something people on your team as I do, but you need to have at least one team member that can take over your own personal clients when you have the opportunity to go out of town. If you don't have someone that can do your own clients when you go out of town, then those clients are gonna have to go to a different business and that's not good for anyone. The next piece of this puzzle that is really essential is what I've talked about in my last couple YouTube videos, which is systematizing and automating your business to allow you to manage it remotely. You know, I have a six figure business with 20 something employees in Florida, and I've been over here in Germany for going on three weeks now. And I don't worry about a thing because I know that my team has it handled and that every aspect of my business has been systematized and automated uh, to the fullest extent. The next thing you need to focus on is how you communicate with your clients and the relationships that you are building with them. You know, uh, I talk a lot about the business aspect of things in my YouTube videos, but this is a relationship based business and you have to focus on those things uh, to get clients like this. Tell them your dreams, tell them your goals, talk to them about their dreams and goals. That's what's going to open up the doors to all kinds of other opportunities. And that's exactly how I got my very first ever travel gig about four years ago in Oregon. I had told one of my clients that my two passions in life are animal welfare and traveling. And she said, oh, well, my sister lives in Oregon and she needs a good pet sitter. Would you be willing to travel there? I said, oh my God, I would love to. She paid for my plane ticket there. She paid my full daily rate. She let me use her car while I was there. And then I met her neighbor while I was there and I ended up going back to Oregon to pet sit for the neighbor. She paid all of the same things. Then that neighbor, told one of her friends that lived in Washington 
That client in Washington had me come out again a year later and so on and so on and so on. You know, I always advocate for not getting too personal with your clients as that makes it difficult to enforce your policies and run your uh, business truly effectively and efficiently. But you should get kind of personal with them. I mean, that's one of the best things about what we do as pet sitters and dog walkers. We're in these people's homes. We kind of become part of their family and, and their family becomes part of our family. You know, uh, talk to them. Just tell them what you want and need out of your life and you never know what kind of opportunities these clients uh, will bring your way. And then once you start getting these different gigs, you have to publicize it to the nth degree. I mean Facebook post, Instagram post, tell your friends, tell your family, make sure that everyone that knows about your business, which should be everyone, knows that you are doing this. Uh, and by publicizing it, you get a lot of wow factor. And what I mean by that is, if one person is willing to fly you out to some random location to pet sit, then you must be really good. And other clients are going to see that. Other potential clients are going to see those Facebook posts, those Instagram posts, hear those conversations, and they're going to say, wow, I need that guy. Some of you may actually recognize Jack and Abby from the dog treat video that I posted about a year ago. And uh, that's because they used to be clients in Jacksonville, uh, where the majority of my business is. And they saw that I had publicized on my social media about going to Oregon for clients there. When they moved uh, out of Jacksonville to another city in Florida a few hours away, they said, hey, we saw that Facebook post. We love you. You love Jack and Abby would you be willing to come here to pet sit for us? Uh, so I did several times, uh, was very grateful for it. And then they had an opportunity to move over here to Germany just a couple months ago. So they called me up and they said, hey, you've been traveling a few hours for us already. How about you get on a plane and come to Germany? I thought they were joking. I mean, I literally laughed. But obviously, they were not joking, and here I am in Malmsheim, Germany. You know, I've been traveling around Europe for three weeks now. I've been with Jack and Abby for 10 days, and I still can't even believe that I'm here. You know, I flew into Frankfurt, and then I spent some time in Paris. I spent some time in London before coming here to start my pet sitting gig, and I'm still pinching myself every day, uh, reminding myself that this is real. And it just goes to show that anything is possible in the pet care industry, especially for us pet sitters and dog walkers. If you want to do something, just put it out there in the universe. Tell your clients, put it on your vision board, manifest it and work for it. Provide a true premium service and attract high end clientele and you can do anything. And I do want to briefly mention two other ways that you can get traveling pet sitting gigs. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail on these two options simply because I do believe in building a business and brand for yourself. That's what I talk about here on this YouTube channel. That's what I've done and that's what I think you should do too. However, if you want to go the value based route, which is where you offer free pet sitting and house sitting in exchange for a place to stay, essentially, you can sign up for an annual uh, paid membership on trustedhousesitters.com. Um, you make a profile on there and then pet owners can post uh, gigs and you apply to the gigs. Um, and uh, I have done gigs on Trusted House Sitter myself. I am not fully against value-based, quote-unquote, pet sitting, I just truly believe in uh, the power of building a business and building a brand for yourself. And at the end of the day, what we do is hard work and should not be done for free. And me being here in Germany proves that 
you can get paid to do this. You don't have to do these kind of gigs for free, and you shouldn't. The other uh, option outside of trusted house sitters is Rover. And again, uh, I know that Rover has a really bad rap uh, in the professional pet care uh, world for a lot of different reasons. However, uh, there is a lot of benefit to be said about uh, you can create a Rover profile in a city that you may want to visit, and then uh, you could potentially get gigs uh, through Rover in that city that way. I actually know someone that uh, is doing that right now, um, so he's proof that that can work too. And Rover is not value-based, so I would recommend doing that uh, over trusted house sitters, but really these are all good options and anything is possible. If you'd like to talk to me more about this or work with me about how to set your business up to provide premium services, how to systemize and automate your business to let you run it remotely, just send me an email and I would be glad to get you scheduled for a uh, coaching session. Um, I don't do many of those, but I do do uh, those occasionally. And of course, as always, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more of my free content that I put out here in the hopes of helping other pet care providers become successful. I'm Doug the Dog Guy from Bad to the Bone Pet Care, reminding you to stay positive.